we are Palestinians, we deserve to have a home, we deserve to have our land, we deserve to have our freedom, and we deserve to have cows. The Wanted 18 is a story of 18 cows being chased by the most powerful army in the Middle East. Uh, those 18 cows were bought by Palestinians during the Intifada to find an alternative milk for the Israeli milk at that time. For me, the Wanted 18 was a personal farm. Uh, as part of the story, as part of the generation, of the young generation who was involved in the Wanted 18 story. This is Beit Sahur, or as it used to be during the Intifada in 1987. This is my town and those are my people. Certainly, for instance, nobody on this side of the ocean has any idea what the Intifada is all about, certainly has no idea that there were 18 cows that had a significant role to play in the Intifada. Okay. Nobody. I quote the exact words. These cows are dangerous for the security of the state of Israel. The first time I read about the cow story, I was in uh, a refugee camp in Syria. That was something like uh, 1990. And uh, at that time, I read in a comic book. Through reading that comic book, I started to know about Bet Sahur, my town, the civil disobedience they went through, and uh, the cow story. And 1996, uh, we got a permit to go back to Palestine. So the reality was nothing like the comic book. It's totally different. And uh, I started to meet the people who I saw in the comic book, like some of our characters. The film, in a way or another, it's about facing the reality of, of losing hope of the Antifada. We did the documentary shooting back in April, yeah. I think. So, so we shot the interviews, and, and then we came back and we cut the interviews, and then we decided what we wanted to dramatize out of that, and then we went back to Palestine in, in August to shoot to shoot the dramatic parts, and then and then Amer came over here to do the animated parts. It was a given at the beginning that it was going to be at least partially a humorous look at this terrible situation, but at the same time we're we're not we're not minimizing the hardships. For me, even when I hear a story uh, with a bit of humor, it engages me more. And I think it's, it's a good tool. During the dramatic shooting, we needed in several scenes to have an Israeli jeep. Okay, and I believe there are only three Israeli jeeps in Palestine. I mean, there, there are not a lot of them. And the day before, we were to pick up the jeep from somebody who was renting it to us. The Israelis raided that guy and took the jeep. And so then we, we had to scramble very quickly and get the second jeep. And when we were shooting in Beit Sahur, the Israelis came to town. And we had to keep our jeep covered with a tarpaulin so they wouldn't come and take it. I mean, these are, and, and what I was amazed at, not so much that the Israelis wanted to do that, but that the Palestinians thought that was kind of funny. Like they didn't, they don't take it, they don't, uh, you know, they yeah. don't take it too seriously. People were calling us that don't shoot there because the army is there. Shoot. Uh, so normal people were changing the shooting schedule based on where the army is at the town now. So we were changing the shooting schedule based on where we can shoot without being. <laughs> the scene when we made the demonstration, there was like more than 200 people who came just to watch. And these are the older generation who they who wanted to remember. And they just stood on the side watching these young kids masked and throwing stones. I come at it from a North American perspective. We don't know much about Israel and Palestine except they fight all the time. And here is a way to look at the conflict from a, a totally new perspective that was partly humorous, partly heartwarming, partly sad, certainly dramatic. But now we get a good story, and we understand through that good story what it's all about. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's fun to watch, but it, it tells an important story. And rarely do you get those two things in one film. <laughs>